Hi guys, welcome to Nana's Corner. My channel is all about learning to DIY, craft, and cook without spending a lot of money. If that's what you're looking for, be sure to subscribe and then click on the bell when it appears so you won't miss when I upload something new. And if you enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up to let me know you'd like to see more. Okay, so today we're going to make some air dry clay and I got this recipe from a, a blog on the internet. I believe it's papermache.com, but I'm not for sure. I'll leave a link below in the description so you can have that as a reference. I'll also put the entire recipe in the description below. Uh, for this recipe, we need half a cup of toilet paper, or it's going to be 24 grams dry and 110 grams wet. You'll need a half a cup of joint compound, half a cup of Elmer's glue, half a cup of cornstarch, three tablespoons of mineral oil or baby oil, and half a cup of all-purpose flour uh, with a little bit extra just in case you need to, it's too wet and you need to dry it up. So I'll leave those items in the description below and let's get started. We're going to have the toilet paper. Now this toilet paper is um, angel soft and I believe it's a, a jumble roll. But we're going to weigh it dry. You want to take the cardboard tube out from the inside. Just squeeze it down. You can pull it out real easy. Now every toilet paper is going to be different. Um, some are thicker, some is thinner. You know, either, every roll is bigger or smaller. So you'll have to figure out what type of toilet paper you're using and we'll measure you have to measure from there okay um, I already weighed this and it comes out to 115 grams okay which we will not need all that for this recipe so we're gonna roll it off and I'm estimating a quarter of a roll but let's see how it works out that's 11 grams. Let's see if we can get it. We need 24. That's 16. And the reason why you have to measure it dry and then wet is because the amount of water. Let's see. We're getting there. That's 21. Let's see if we can get it all on there. Oh, 24. Perfect. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm just using a kitchen scale. If you don't have one, you'll kind of have to eyeball it, and I'll try and show you um, what the consistency is. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take it and we're going to wet the water paper, the toilet paper in the water, and we kind of want to you want to break it up. Just kind of squish it around. This is warm water in here, not hot, just warm water. And you want to break all the, the fibers up. So, it breaks real easy. Toilet paper is made to do that. It's kind of like you're making pulp. And just swish it around in there and break it all up. The more you break it up, the smoother the clay is going to be. Okay, now we got it all broken up. And what we're going to want to do is weigh it again. Let's see if I can get that a little closer. Turn it on. Can you see that? Let me bring it a little bit closer. See that now? Um, well, you might have to take my word for it if you can't see it. But what we're going to do is we're going to get some and squeeze the water out of it. And we're going to put it on here. And what we want is uh, 110 grams wet. So you can see we're going from 24 grams to 110. So that's measuring the toilet paper with the water. 
It doesn't take much toilet paper at all. And I imagine if you're off a little bit on how much water you squeeze out, you could probably add more flour to it to dry it up some. So we're at 59 right now. More, it's breaking down. It's a little bit harder to scoop it up. So that's 76. You might want a strainer to help you out. 85. Ninety-two, we're getting closer. And you see how it's broken up so much, it's hard to at the end here to scoop it up. Ninety-nine or ninety-eight. See if I can get it. Yes. Strainer would probably help. there 105 we need 110 108 and I'm sure you don't have to be exact but I just want to get it as close as possible to show you that it works There we go, 110, 111, there we go. Okay, let me clean my hands off and clean up my workspace here and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. And I wanted to show you that if you don't have a scale to measure, um, I took the wet toilet paper that I measured out and put it down into a half cup measuring cup and it fits just about perfect in there. So a half cup, if you measure it out that way, squeeze the water down and out, um, you should be good, okay? So the texture, if you can see, it just pulls right apart. It's, when you squeeze it, not too much more water comes out. A little bit, but not a whole lot, a couple drops. Okay, so we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna break it apart in here so it's not all in one clump. The more you break it down, the easier it will be to mix and the smoother your clay will be. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to add in half a cup of flour. And we're going to do half a cup of cornstarch. And then we're going to get half a cup of joint, joint compound, or I'm using vinyl spackling. It's similar. Um, use what you can find at my store that I went to. They didn't have uh, the joint compound except in huge um, industrial size containers. So I got this because it was a smaller container. But you can find it. I know at Walmart. So we're going to get a half a cup, half a cup of this, and we're going to put that in. And 
and then we're also going to get half a cup of Elmer's school glue and we're going to pour that into our measuring cup. I have the big size, uh, the gallon size. It's more economical that way if you use quite a bit of it um, for different projects. You can get a smaller size if you're only going to use it for this. So we have half a cup of that. And then we are going to do also add three tablespoons of baby oil. I think the baby oil keeps it from drying out too quick. It kind of gives it a little bit more working time. And that's it guys. Then we just mix it up. I'm going to start it mixing it up with my spatula here. Um, but I'm going to go to my electric mixer that I have for crafting. It's just a hand mixer. Um, if you don't have one then you can do it by hand. It's just going to take a little bit more work. You want to get it smooth and it's going to be sticky. You may want to use gloves because you can see how sticky it is right now. But um, it's, it's manageable. Okay, so let me get my hand mixer out and ready and I'll come back. Okay, I've got my mixer with the mixer parts on. We're going to try and start off slow and mix it up and see how far we can get without it getting too thick for the mixer. Okay. Alrighty, we got a big old clump, so let's get that off. And I think we're going to have to go to our hands. I imagine if you had the dough hooks, where it's just a single um, prong for your mixer, that would work. Uh, but I don't have that. So we're going to go to our hands. Because we, right now, we need to add in more flour because it's very sticky. And you don't want it that sticky because it will stick to everything. Okay, let me clean a little bit, move my mixer out of the way, and then I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. And what I've done is gotten some parchment paper, um, just from the Dollar Tree, any kind of parchment paper, just to put down because it's quite sticky. And I would suggest, it, if you have any jewelry on, any rings, to take those off because you might not be able to get it out if you get it in them. Okay, we're going to add some flour. And it says to add up to three quarters of a cup of flour. So we're going to put some in and we'll add it slowly just to see how it goes. we will get it a little bit more mixed up before I dump it out just to get some of that stickiness off. Okay, now I'm going to dump it out onto the parchment paper just like if you, were, if you ever made dough or pizza dough, bread, it's kind of like that, or even pie crust. You want to flour your hands up some so that they don't, at first, doesn't stick. And you're just going to kind of knead it. Okay, I went ahead and added that 
three quarters of a cup extra flour to it and I kneaded it off camera because I didn't want y'all to bounce all around as I was kneading and as you can see it's gotten a whole lot less sticky it's not even really sticking to my hands now if you're in a humid area you may have to add more flour until you get it you want it to be sticky so that it will stick when you make something out of it but you don't want it to be so sticky that you can't work with it see my hands come right off and you can see let me get it as close as I can you can get this very thin and it pretty much holds its own shape so it seems like it's gonna work real good now this is not the type of clay that you would make a big pot out of you know it's not the type of clay that you put in a kiln or you know cook to dry what you're gonna do is it's gonna air dry you're basically just gonna set it out and let it dry on its own so with that being said if you're not gonna use this right away and even if you're not gonna use all of it I would go ahead and put it in a ziploc bag get as much air out as possible and then you can probably keep it for a while and if you needed an extended period of time I would probably recommend um, putting it in the refrigerator or a cool place so that you know it doesn't I don't think it would grow mold but you never know might get a little um, pungent but you get quite amount of big amount of clay for those that small amount of toilet paper and products and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and test it out I'm gonna just put some like around a bottle this is the type of clay you would mold around something use an armature or a form to use and let it dry like that and I will show you once I have some on there and it dries and see let's see how hard it gets okay so I got the clay all cleaned up and I got out uh, just a plastic container this used to be who used to hold some Christmas garland the bead beaded garland and it's just plastic I didn't throw it away and what we got the clay and I just wanted to show you how you can use this clay okay I'm just going to like wrap it around and it sticks press it down onto whatever form you're using armature just wrap it around and I'm thinking that I might turn this into some sort of like a, a tree stump for maybe a fairy garden but I'm just going to do a quick job here I'm not going to go into all the details of how to make it I just for this video I'm just showing you how you can use this clay in an example and if you need to smooth it out you just dip in some water and you can just smooth it out smooths out really well and sticks okay you can also if you have like a little pick just make if you want to make lines in it or draw in it if you want to you know maybe make some indentations for maybe a door and I'm just doing a quick job of course when you did it you would do a much cleaner and then you can take portions of it off and then you want to smooth it out and like I said I will make another video using this and actually once I have it planned out what I want to actually make showing you how to do it but this is basically the gist of it and you just kinda whatever you wanna make you can just like with regular clay roll it out make little snakes and then you may wanna wet it where you want it to stick and just stick it there So you just mold it and smooth it the way you want and you can really get this clay pretty thin and it will hold its shape so I think this is a win
and then you don't have to go out and buy clay because clay can get expensive if you're going to use quite a bit of it. If you're just going to do a small project, you know, you might want to put out the money, but if you, molding clay is pretty fun, so you might get addicted and you might have to make your own. But that's just a quick one. I'm going to set this to dry. And that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed it. In the description below, I'll weigh this out and show you how much it is. And I'll do a cost analysis because you can buy air dry clay um, in stores and craft stores. But I want to, you know, show you, you can make it at home if you don't have the money. I want to give you a cost analysis of how much it would cost to buy this amount of product. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed that video. Look uh, for my next video where I make something out of it. Okay, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up so I know and I'll make more like this more art supplies that you can use that you make yourself and if you haven't already subscribed go ahead and subscribe stick around a while and have some fun with us alright guys have fun bye 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 bye